The Rodecaster Pro 2 beta program is now open and you can get access to some great new features in the firmware update 1.0.5, which is uh, currently in beta. Uh, and so in this video, I'm going to tell you about those new features and also how you can get access to the beta program. In fact, let's start with that, shall we? Uh, that is uh, simply by going to their registration page. You'll find a link to that down in the description. All you're going to do there is enter your name, your email address, and your product serial number. The Rodecaster Pro serial number can be found in one of two places. I Either it is on the underside of the device itself, printed, so you'll see the uh, where the sort of visa mount is in the center under the, on the underside. There is a little QR code, and then just above that, there's something that looks suspiciously like a serial number. That's your serial number. You can also find it from the front of the device if you don't want to turn it upside down. Uh, and from that, all you're going to do is, if I come out of here, uh, the little settings uh, cogwheel just up at the top there. Click on that. Click on system. Click on information. Uh, and then view device information. And in there, you'll find your serial number and also your current firmware version that you're running as well. Now, once you've filled out the details uh, back over on the website, you'll just put your serial number in there. Uh, Click submit and then you'll get an email from Rode uh, welcoming you to the beta program and giving you information on how you actually access uh, the beta software. And uh, I'll just run through that uh, very similar to what we've just done. In fact, you're gonna click on the settings at the top click on system, click on information, click on view device information. In fact, back to that exact same stream, screen, I could have just stayed there, couldn't I? But then here, you'll see uh, in this little window, it's gonna ask you to basically tap on here uh, 10 times and just tap on that like a secret handshake 10 times uh, and then it would change from saying information at the top to beta mode. Uh, and then once you're in beta mode, you just need to come back out of that menu and click on the check for update and then it will uh, check for the latest beta update and then you'll be, uh, you'll be good to go. So once you've done that, uh, we are literally uh, all ready to go with all of these new features to play with. So there's a few new features, and I'll start with the ones that are relating to the USB inputs and outputs. So we have got uh, two USB inputs and outputs on the back, but actually, uh, although there's only two cables, there are actually three separate uh, channels there. Uh, the first being Rodecaster Pro 2 main, then there's Rodecaster Pro 2 chat, which are both on a single cable, uh, and then on the secondary cable, uh, interestingly named Rodecaster Pro 2 Secondary is the uh, uh, the channel that's on there. So those are the three channels. I've got them assigned to these three channels here on the Rodecaster Pro 2. Uh, so these are the inputs and outputs. So the first thing that has been changed is on the Rodecaster Pro 2 main, uh, previously they were sending out a multi-track mix to that uh, that channel uh, and we did have a couple of options you could either have it pre-fader and post-fader so a couple of things to talk about here what do i mean by multi-track well obviously we've got multiple different things that are coming into the rocaster pro 2 we could have uh, you know four microphones a microphone and a guitar two microphones whatever it happens to be uh, and we've got the usb channels all coming in as well and then we've got the uh, the audio pads here as well the smart pads and then also bluetooth so there's lots of different tracks lots of different channels in here um, well, previously uh, over USB, it was sending out all of those tracks individually uh, so that if you are using this with a door, a digital audio workstation, uh, which is basically kind of like a virtual mixer on your computer, uh, then it would send all of those tracks individually to the uh, to the computer. Your mix could pick them up and then you could do some uh, you know, mixing or arranging or whatever you wanted to do in your computer. Now, uh, what we had, if I come into the settings and then I'll come into outputs, and then multi-track. What we had before is we've got the, first of all, we've got the mix for what's happening in the recording. So this is when you're recording on the device, but you've also got this USB one here as well. And previously we just had the option of pre-fader and post-fader. Uh, and what that means is when it's sending out this multi-track mix, uh, you could either send out all of the raw signals that are coming into the Rodecaster Pro and just send them out as a, uh, you know, raw signals back out in a multi-track mix or as a, a multiple tracks, I should say, um, or that, that would be pre-fader, as in these are the faders, so before anything's happened with these faders, um, or you could choose to have post-fader. Now, with post-fader, if you have adjusted levels on here, it adjusts the levels of the uh, the audio that is going out into that mix. Um, so, you know, if you're going to be doing some post-processing and things like that, uh, you I guess you would ideally want uh, none of the... Uh, 
you know the processing that you've done on here to be trans uh, translated across uh, but perhaps you might do it as well so who knows but in any case those were the only two options we had pre-fader or post-fader well now we've got this third option that's been added to basically just turn that off and so it's rather than being a multi-track uh, output it is just a stereo output um, with you know all of the things that you've done in here all of the effects all of the levels and things that you've set here just going out so certainly for my purposes where I'm just sending this out uh, into you know an application like uh, Ecamm Live or Zoom or Discord or whatever. That's what I want, just a single uh, stereo out. Uh, this, by the way, solves an issue that uh, there was with some applications that didn't really like the multi-track mix. So I know that certain things that work in a browser um, didn't really like it. Ecamm Live had a slight issue with it, although there was a workaround for that um, in the uh, settings of Ecamm. Um, but that is, uh, is what is the first new feature that was added. So then as well as that though, previously the three channels, oh, and by the way, I should also say that you'll see uh, just down below me, uh, we've got the channel names. So there's Roadcaster Pro 2 Chat, Roadcaster Pro 2 Multitrack, uh, sorry, Main uh, Multitrack and Roadcaster Pro 2 Secondary. If you have just got that stereo output, these will change to be Rocaster Pro 2 Chat and then that second one, Rocaster Pro 2 Main Stereo. So uh, those that just down below are the, the, it's that middle one really that is gonna change depending on the output that you've got. So you will actually be able to see in your computer whether you have got that multi-track switched on or off. Uh, but the other thing to note about that is if you've got anything that is using this device, so you've got it currently set to multi, uh, to Rocaster Pro 2 Main Multi-Track, if you then go into the Rodecaster and you change that setting, uh, then anything that you've got using that uh, that device as an input or output, uh, it will no longer be there. It might have gone to some other default. So if you do change anything in here, uh, just go and check on, on your computer that you do have the, the right thing selected. So for example, like in Ecamm, it was selected to uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 main uh, multi-track. And then when I came and changed it in here, it just defaulted to some other microphone. So uh, that's just something to be aware of there. The next thing, though, that we've got is uh, related to Mix Minus, and uh, this is a really great feature. And I know a lot of people have been uh, excited about this. Uh, so still in the outputs, and this is this routing table that has been uh, talked about quite a lot. Um, previously, the main channel what did not have Mix Minus on. The chat channel did have Mix Minus on, and the secondary channel, you could choose whether or not you wanted to have Mix Minus on or not. Uh, maybe just uh, I should explain what mix minus is when you are using a device like this as both an input and an output uh, from for example let's say zoom so you're using this as the mic in to zoom so that you can play sound effects and things like that or whatever you might happen to be doing into your zoom calls or workshops um, this could be selected as the the sort of microphone but it could also be selected as the output so it is where you're hearing everything because you've got your, your monitors plugged into it so you want the audio to come out from zoom and into here so that you can hear it as well however uh, what that would do would mean that the audio from zoom was coming into the device and then going straight back out of the device into zoom again and what that would mean is the people on the zoom call would hear a uh, slap back so they'd hear themselves back momentarily later um, and the same with Ecamm Live, if you're using it with Ecamm Live or something like that for recording videos, then you, if you're playing any audio that is originated from Ecamm, it would come into the device and back into Ecamm. So there again, you would get that kind of slap back, that duplication of audio. Mix minus basically takes anything that's coming in on a given channel and it minus, it subtracts it from the mix that's going back. So it basically means you just avoid that slap back. So, uh, and it's important to note as well that you don't actually hear it in your ears as you are monitoring it. It's only the person on the other end that hears it and they'll be telling you, I'm hearing slap back and you're thinking, I'm not hearing it. Well, that's what mix minus is. So um, with this though now, with those three channels, we've basically got the option to turn mix minus on for every channel. Uh, and so we just come into the channels here. So let me just show you how I got into this just in case you are missing it. Click in the settings, click in outputs, and then on the uh, routing here <laughs> and then at the top there you can see we've got the USB one but I can click the arrow USB one main that was this is the chat next is the secondary 
Uh, and this also applies to Bluetooth, I should say, as well. So if you are connected to Bluetooth. And you can see here we've got main or mix minus. So we have the option to uh, turn that on and off for any channel. But actually, it's this routing table. They've gone one step further with this and really opened up some, uh, some great options because we can go into this custom and then uh, this is basically simulating what, what Mix Minus is right now as it's set up because this is the USB one main coming in and you can see these are all the channels that are going out to USB one. So here we've got the uh, all of the other channels basically except USB one that's got a little red cross next to it. All of these have got a tick next to it. But what if we wanted, um, we didn't want all of these channels going to USB one. Well, I could just toggle these off. So maybe I'm using my USB secondary as like a chat channel or something like that uh, or I've got a back channel going in discord or whatever and I just simply don't want that to go out to that I could just easily toggle this one off here uh, maybe I don't want the bluetooth maybe I've got uh, a call going on or something like that that's another way of having a back channel and I don't want it to go in through that way uh, so that is the way that you would do that by the way if it's something where where you are actually going to at some point maybe want to bring someone in. So if you are using this as like a back channel chat where um, you're going to want to be listening to people, but at some point you might also want to be able to bring them into the show or the live stream or whatever it is you happen to, happen to be doing, uh, then this would not be the way to do it because you'd want to then be able to toggle it on and off. So I've got another way to go about that if you are doing something where it's a back channel that you want to include them in the show at some point and you just want to basically mute them at times and bring them in. There's another way to do that, which I'll cover in a separate video and link down below. Um, but this just gives us really uh, full control over what is being routed to where. Now, at the moment, this is only for the USB channels. I understand it's the plan to also introduce this uh, similar sort of routing uh, for the, uh, the headphones and the outputs there as well. But currently, it is just applied to these. But as it is, this is a great feature, and I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this. Now, the next thing that we've got, though, is if I come back out of here, um, the, uh, the, with the virtual faders here, so we've got six faders here that are on the device itself, uh, and those are represented by these six channels here. You can see I'm just talking into the microphone. This is the only one that's going up and down here. As I move this fader, just out of shot, you can't even see it, but there you go. <laughs> that is what is going on there. Um, but we've also got these virtual faders. So at the moment, I've got one virtual channel. And by the way, uh, it will only show up the virtual faders that you've got something assigned to. So there's only one there at the moment because I've only got one thing assigned to it, which is Bluetooth. However, if I did go into my fader setup, so let me just come into faders, you can see I've got two spare ones here as well. So let's just say for the sake of argument that I was going to add in uh, maybe another input there and I'll click on that come back there you can see now it's added this uh, this extra one in as well so you can have up to up to three virtual faders so one thing that they've done here is uh, if you have got a fader selected um then um this was as it has always been uh, this one uh, then controls that uh, that fader so you can see as i'm turning the dial here it is moving the virtual fader up and down that's nothing new. What is new, however, is if I push and hold this, uh, then that actually activates mute. So if you have got a channel that you've got uh, selected, then you can uh, push and hold this to toggle the mute on and off. Uh, you can also just do it from here though. So this is where you toggle on the uh, mute command, and then this is where you toggle on the listen command. Uh, the listen, by the way, is that's where you are, um, when I press that, all I'm hearing now in my ears, I'm not hearing anything else in the mix except what is coming through on this channel. So if I'd got somebody talking to me in a back channel and I wanted to, uh, maybe there was other people on other microphones, they were all talking and I wanted to just listen what was going on in this one channel. That is how you would do that. Maybe queuing up music, maybe doing whatever. I'm not sure. Um, but that is how you toggle that one on. And this one then is the mute button. Uh, you do have to have that channel uh, selected in order for that to work. So you click on here first, uh, and then this now is the fader level, and then press and hold for the mute. So you do still always have that on there anyway. Uh, it's not a huge shortcut really, but it's uh, still nevertheless some extra little functionality. The other thing that they've done is with all of these faders, when you move uh, a fader down to the bottom, so as I move this fader, you can see that it's moving down there. Uh, when it is completely off, it does actually change. Instead of being white, uh, you can see that it sort of goes, uh, it's actually just a very 
a white outline with a gray center. So that just shows you that it is completely off. If it was slightly up, um, it might still look white and you might think that it was down at the bottom and it was off, but actually it's still on a little bit. So that just means that uh, when it is right down at the bottom, then it will be completely off. Uh, another thing that they've added is uh, just coming back to these virtual faders is actually when you um, toggle one of these things. So if I toggle the mute, uh, you can see it shows a little mute light just down at the bottom, a little mute symbol. Uh, and if I toggle the listen, uh, then you can see that now we've got the little listen icon down there as well. So it just makes it clear that uh, you've got either one or both of those on. Because um, previously, it worked in the same way as uh, the main faders. You just toggle that one off. Uh, with the main faders, uh, this, to be honest, I think they should just uh, duplicate whatever they've got going on with the virtual ones. Because if I just move this up here slightly, <laughs> there, um, this is simulating these two buttons that we've got next to each channel. Uh, and uh, we've there got the uh, listen button. Uh, I know I can press that one and I'm just listening to that. You can see how it's sort of come on with a brighter light. Uh, and then this one here is the mute button. Uh, and that is basically muting the, uh, the audio from there. Uh, so it's not going down into the mix. So what happens though is when I press mute on here, we do also get a visual representation up here. Um, but you can see it turns the whole of that, uh, that base there red as I toggle it on and off. So just up at the top for that corresponding channel. If I toggle the listen, uh, you can see it toggles on this little green light. However, if I toggle both of them on, uh, then it actually defaults to just showing the mute. So you can't see from up here uh, whether the listen is also toggled on. Uh, I think that that would be better if they kind of replicated something that uh, showed you if one or both of them are on, maybe sort of half and half, half green and half red. Um, but that is the problem that they've solved with this new uh, new update here because previously it did the same on those as well. Whoops, Daisy, there we go. Uh, it did the same on there as well. If you had the uh, listen and mute, uh, then it would only show it as red and so it wasn't at all clear because there's no other visible uh, way of showing that. Um, by the way, um, these down here, um, if I toggle that on, you can see that, that it actually becomes slightly brighter. You perhaps can't see it too well here, um, but you can change the relative brightness of these as well. So uh, this is nothing new, but it might be something that is useful to you. Uh, so if you come into the settings, uh, into display, and then into brightness, uh, you've got the brightness of the screen here. So just click on that one and then we can turn the knob and this is where we're going to change the brightness of the screen. Um, but this one here, if I click on buttons, uh, there's basically two brightness levels. There's either the inactive level and the active level. Uh, and it's displayed just on one uh, dial like this. Um, and basically the, uh, the end up here is where the maximum brightness is. Uh, and then where the line starts from is the brightness of uh, it when it's inactive. Hopefully this should make a bit more sense when I actually do this. So I've got the inactive brightness setting. And if I turn that down, you can see it's turning down the brightness of all of the buttons. And then if I turn it up, they're coming up. But that is when they are inactive. Uh, and then the active setting is the brightness of any buttons that happen to be active. So that would be like this. You can see now that that is standing out a lot more, uh, but I can turn the brightness of that one down as well. Uh, and that is where you adjust those. Uh, I think it might be useful if uh, the brightness of these bottom ones down here could be turned down just so that you do get that clear sort of uh, uh, distinction between the on and off whilst still not affecting these ones because uh, I don't know if you like me, but I do like all of the pretty lights. <laughs> but when I have the brightness of these turned up, then it just means that there's not so much of a differentiation between these, whether they are on or off. But uh, maybe that's me just been nitpicking. But there you go. That is um, another thing that has been added in to uh, just make it a little bit clearer in the virtual faders when things are on or off, just like that. So that is some of the new features that have been added into the Rodecaster Pro 2 beta. But uh, there's some other videos all about the Rodecaster Pro 2 that are coming up right now. So I'll see you in there.